a lot of people think it's only something that sort of moves away from the original thinking of what parkour is. And I don't believe it needs to be, uh, or it needs to be that way. But you need to be really clever about what you do. And I also think it has a, on the other hand, it has a much bigger potential than just being something for parkour. My name is uh, Mikkel Ruko. Um, I have a degree in, in architecture, and I've been interested in physical activity and movement all my life. Been doing a lot of different stuff. Um, I did capoeira for many years. And I think that got me sort of on the track to parkour because it has a very playful and experimental approach to movement. Yeah, so at some point uh, I met some guys and they were sort of starting up a thing they called street movement. And this thing turned out into this other thing and, and uh, it turned into a company at some point. And we realized, well, there might be a potential within what I do with architecture and what they did with movement um, and especially since I very much kind of understood where they were coming from and what they wanted to do. We want, we want a parkour park. Uh, okay that's pretty easy because it's just one function. You need to solve just one problem. Um, when it needs to be able to do more than that and also have like the, the whole social aspects and and you need to consider like all the different types of people uh, maybe passing, not, not just using the space, but also just passing through or whatever it may be, then it's much more complex and you know, much more difficult to solve uh, that puzzle. So I also believe it has uh, a much bigger potential than just being a parkour thing, a uh, specific parkour thing. I don't think, and I think you don't necessarily have to remove bits of the parkour specific thing to add the other stuff. It's not like one or the other. It's more like both, <laughs> if you do it right. Um, but it's also much more difficult to, to solve that puzzle. The, the process of, from one project to the next can be very, very different. And um, it's, it's weird because with parkour and, and activity, there's a, and with what we're doing with designing and, and building and stuff, it's, it has this weird inherent paradox because it used to be us adapting to our surroundings. Now we're trying to adapt the surroundings to ourselves, which is really weird. And I think you got to be really careful um, not to take away uh, the original sort of creative uh, movement bit. Um, so what I feel like is always something that I always try to have very present in. in in, um, in my mind when, when, when we design stuff is that it needs to be able to do something completely different from what you'd be able to find in the already built environment in the, in the existing space. I need, to, I need to add something. I don't, it, it's not enough to just copy elements and, and, um, and just put them together in the same space, which is kind of the way it worked in the beginning. And it works. I mean, it works as a, from a functionality type of view it, 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 it works very well but it's just not why would you really copy stuff that is already there or stuff that you can find all around you already I mean at least from a from thinking about how this thing is going to evolve um, I feel I have so I need I need to I need to add things I need to sort of force like create obstacles to create opportunities that force people to move uh, in a different way. So they evolve, evolve themselves as, as well in the, in the way that they move. Otherwise, I don't really feel like um, I can justify my work. I, I try to tell our clients that they need to understand that facilities and equipment has never really been a necessity and will never be, in my opinion, a necessity for doing parkour. Um, so if that's what they think, if, if that's what they believe when they contact us, they, they, they might need to rethink the whole process. Um, it's a very much, to me, it's very much a luxury and it can add a lot of stuff, especially like very, in a very practical sense, if you have like a lot of people and you're in a teaching environment, um, it's very hard to find uh, large areas within the city that you don't like crowd people if you show up 50 people at a time or, um, you know, and that's just from, from functionality training wise, like having collected a lot of like a lot of training opportunities in the same area. Yeah, obviously it's very practical. In that sense, I think it's, it's, 
it, it can be a very good thing. In my opinion, you need to start with the human skills. That's, that's what makes the activity. Like if you need to, if you want to get into parkour, you need to, you need to learn. You need to learn about the movement. You need, and maybe you need somebody to teach you. So that's sometimes what I have to tell people. I'm like, okay, are you really sure this is what you want? Or maybe not, what, maybe you're sure that's what you want, but it's probably not what you need. But they don't necessarily understand it themselves. And I don't expect them to, why, why would they? So it's, that kind of makes me a really bad salesperson, I guess, from, from if I was only selling equipment. But it's, um, I, just think, I think it's, it's a necessary approach um, to be able to like, hold on to your integrity and, and to the essence of, 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 of what parkour really is. And a lot of people don't, still don't understand uh, what it's all about. So I, I kind of feel like I have a responsibility in a way. <laughs> so when I get, do get the opportunity of, of doing something interesting, it's, I, I feel like, okay, so I need to do something different. Sometimes it can just be, so sometimes I'll be like, okay, so to, with this project, let's do something round. <laughs> because it's just different or, you know, it can be as, as basic as that and as weird as that, depending on obviously uh, what, what the client kind of wants and what I'm able to do, how much freedom I have. Um, and other times it's more traditional in a way, but I always try to, you know, twist it in some little weird way and also try to keep in mind also the, the, like the, the, the training I have within uh, architecture and, and, and designing like how about the sun what about having a space that is just it'd be really nice to just hang out in that little platform up there in the sun and it's in the uh, cover, cover of the wind and uh, you know stuff like that uh, that I, th I think most uh, normal parkour people don't necessarily think about there are two sides of it I think at this one that is um, sort of being a part of evolving the activity and that's the part that sort of supports elements of how you introduce the activity to people that have never done before or um, just in a training sense. It's, it's open to the public and that's the way it's, it, it, it will stay. They used to have a gate and a fence but they decided that um, you know they want to encourage uh, the activity. Um, they do have, uh, they run classes here as well at certain times a week. But the rest of the time, it's it's going to be open like this. And uh, personally, I think it's great. And I think these guys know what they're doing. We have, they, they have a good community down here as well. So there are people that can sort of support support it in a responsible way. Because it does bring a responsibility, and you have to be aware of your responsibility. And if you're not ready to accept it, it's um, I think you should just leave it alone. We don't give the kids enough, enough credit because they they know when stuff is is it's uh, uh, too risky. I mean, you'll see them like you see these guys that they, they get up there, they, they look at stuff, and they, and they know that this is a hard surface. I'm, I can't do it. If it doesn't feel right, I'm not gonna do it because then I'm probably gonna hurt myself. So, um, it's kind of a lot of very um, natural progression to, to things. It's the way it should be because that's the way the world is. It's not soft and comfortable all the time. <laughs> I think the only reason why people think Denmark is, is like the parkour mecca or whatever with in, 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 um, when talking about facilities, uh, it's, I think it's just we've been lucky or um, been skilled enough to, to have uh, or to develop a, a, a healthy community and convince people that what we do uh, with movement is a very, very positive thing. And we reach a group of people that may not really fit into other parts of, of uh, movement, uh, you know, cultures. Um, because, because, because of the nature that parkour is, it's very informal, it's very self-organized, it's, uh, it's very much what you make of it. And you don't need to, you don't need a certain skill set you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to be, um, I mean, you, you, we, you know, we kind of teach what, that, that, you know, you make it, whatever, you, you make it your own. You do with it what you really, um, what, what you feel like, and, and you can work at your own level. So that's a huge potential. I think we've been 
been lucky enough that uh, people realize that it, it does have a, a huge potential and it, and it can be a very positive thing. I think that's why the government um, and the cities support it quite a bit.